Good evening, everyone. Now we are going to do the two activities we left in tutorial. I hope you got the chance to approach them already. If not, stop the video now. Do them first, and then come back for it. Okay. So they ask you to compute a two, a three, a four using this recursive definition. If you don't know what that is, this is a definition, recursive definition, and they want you to prove this equation. So let's just compute it first. A two would be three times a one plus one, which is three times one plus one, which will be four. A three. Is three times a two plus one, which will be three times four plus one, equals to thirteen. A four would be three times a three plus one, and that equals to thirteen times three plus one, which is forty. Okay. Now we need to prove this by using induction. So first of all, let's define our p of n. Let p of n be the statement a n equals to. 3 to the power of n minus 1 over 2. Alright, now base case for n equals to 1, we have 3 to the power of 1 minus 1 over 2, which would be 3 minus 1. That's 2 over 2, which is 1. And that is a 1. Okay, so those two number matches. So we have our base case down. Now inductive hypothesis. Uh, starting from here, I'm going to do it twice. One using Mike's method. The second one use my own method. But they are, as I um, explained in tutorial, they are the same thing. But let's just do it using his method. So now... Suppose Pn is true for some n in natural number. Okay, remember, as I mentioned in tutorial, this is really important. This is really important as well. Okay, please don't write all, please don't write for all n in natural number. That's not right. So I'm going to write a bit more. We want to show since we suppose Pn of is true, so we want to show Pn plus 1 is true. Okay. Now we're finally at the induction step. Note that a n plus 1 equals 2. Now, this is the time you use your definition. This is the definition, so we use that. This is 3 to the uh, 3 times a n plus 1. This is by recursive definition. Alright, so for this type of question, the recursive sequence, you always want to use a definition first. And your second step is use your uh, IH, inductive hypothesis. So we use our IH, which is PN is true. What is our PN? PN is this. Okay, so we suppose this is true. Then we can write AN as 
3 to the n minus 1 over 2 plus 1. Okay, this is by ih. Now you can just manipulate. This will give you uh, 3 times 3 to the power of n minus 3 plus 2. And this is 3 to the power of n plus 1 minus 1 over 2. Okay, which is exactly what we need as desired. Therefore, so we show that p of n is true implies p of n plus 1 is true. Therefore, by principle of mathematical induction, pn is true for all n in natural number. That's it. Okay? Now I'll show you how uh, I would normally prove it. It is the same thing as I explained in tutorial, but uh, just in case some of you want to use this, then you can use it as well. Suppose, so the base case is the same, okay? Everything here, oops, everything here will be the same thing, but starting from the uh, inductive hypothesis, something changes. So I'm gonna suppose a k equals to 3 to the k minus 1 over 2 for some k in natural number. Again, this is important, this is important. Now we use our definition. We use this definition, which will give us uh, okay, yeah, sorry. Uh, I need to mention this. So we, we consider n equals to k plus 1, okay? Now we need to show p of n is true. And that's how we do this. So we now we use the definition, uh, a to the k plus 1 will be a 3 times a to the k plus 1. This is by definition. Now you use your ih, which is here. This is your ih. We use that. We'll give you 3 to the k minus 1 over 2 plus 1, and we manipulate it, going to give you this, which is 2 to the 3 to the k plus 1 minus 1. This is uh, exactly what we need. Therefore, by PMI, P of n is true for all n in natural number. And we are done. Again, the difference is that um, he supposed P of n is true and proved that P of n plus 1 is true. What I did is we, I, used, uh, I introduced another variable k and I suppose p of k is true, and now I, I try to show that p of k plus 1, which is p of n, is true. But as you can see, they are literally the same thing, so pick whatever you want and continue with that. Right? Activity 4, they want you to generalize your previous proof to find an ex explicit formula for the sequence defined by b. 1 equal to 1 and b n plus 1 equals to 13 times b n plus 1. So as you can see, this definition 
is quite similar to what we have here. All right. So based on that, we can take a guess. So if you look at this line here, this line and this line here, I'm just going to guess my b n plus 1 would be actually b over n. So a k plus 1 is a because our n equals to k plus 1. Okay, so this literally gives you uh, a n equals to 3 to the n minus 1 over 2. So let's take a guess. This b n would be, so uh, our definition here we have 3, oops, we have 3 here. We have 13 here, so I'm going to substitute 3 with 13. So I'm guessing this will be 13 to the power of n minus 1 over, well, here we have 2. Well, notice that 2 equals to 3 minus 1, okay? So I'm guessing here would be 13 minus 1, which is 12. And this is exactly the formula for this. If you don't believe me, go home and prove this. So, homework. Prove this is true. Uh, for all an in natural number. Okay? Well, I showed you the proof for uh, one... One here is three, so I'm pretty sure everyone can do this. Now, something else I would like to say is that we can generalize the whole thing. So, in general, if we have a number c, which is in, uh, which is a real number, and this number is greater than one then the uh then the recursive formula if we have a one equals to one and a n plus one equals to c times a n plus one then we have our explicit formula for this would be a m equals to c to the power of n minus 1 over c minus 1. So this is a generalized case. If you, I, I don't know, some of you might think this formula looks familiar. If you look at this, uh, some of you might seen it before, and I'm just gonna recall. If you've seen it before, I'll tell you what it is. This is a finite geometric zone. Which is 1 plus c plus c squared plus c cubed plus da 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 toc to the power of n minus 1 would be equal to c to the n minus 1 over c minus 1. This is exactly the same as what we have here. Okay? This is kind of like um, the motivation of telling you how we came up with this formula. Uh, if you are interested, go home and think about this. And uh, since we talked about geometric sum already, I'll tell you the infinite geometric sum. So... By the way, those are not 102 stuff. If you are interested in math, 
especially if you are taking 137 or 157, you'll see this very soon. Probably not very soon, but you'll see this eventually in your class. So this is uh, infinite, so we go from 0 to infinite. And let's say to the power of i would be equal to 1 over 1 minus c. Uh, if you see the absolute value of c is smaller than 1. Okay? Uh, I believe you will learn it in calculus, probably in next semester, but this is really important. The infinite geometric sum. You'll use it, uh, not use it, you'll see it all the time. Anyway, that is the end of my video. Hopefully, I can upload a video about uh, induction and strong induction in general. Um, probably on Wednesday night. I'm not sure. So, um, but we'll see. Bye.